Good day everyone. In this video, we will be tackling about the last parts of our chapter 3 about encryption. So, in this video, for our lecture objectives, after you have watched and listened in this video, you should be able to define and stimulate conventional encryption, differentiate cryptography and crypt analysis, enumerate type of attack on encrypted message, discuss steganography, and identify and explain the different steganography technique. Okay? So first, let's have the conventional encryption. It is actually the symmetric encryption or single key encryption. And when we say symmetric encryption, only one key is used to both encrypt and decrypt electronic information. So that is why it's also called single key encryption because it only uses one key. Okay, to both encrypt and decrypt the electronic information. Okay, to illustrate that, we have here a figure of conventional encryption model. Actually, the one that we had in our previous video is a conventional encryption model because Alice and Bob there have used one key only. So, both to decrypt, okay, or to encrypt and decrypt their messages. So, it is called symmetric encryption, okay. So, in this figure, let us identify first the terms, okay. So, message source here is the plain text, okay, which is represented by the letter X, okay. Letter K here is our key, okay? It is our key to encrypt the message X. And after the encryption algorithm, okay, Y here now is represented as the cipher text, okay? So in between the uh, sending and receiving of messages or information, Okay, it is linked in a secure channel. Okay, and within this channel, there is a chance here for crypt analysis, which is done okay, by the crypt analyst, which are usually the persons okay, or the hackers who wanted to know what is the message sent. Okay. And after going through the secure channel, okay, the decryption algorithm is done wherein our ciphertext Y, okay, is converted again to letter X which represents the message source or the plain text, okay, to be received by the receiver. Okay, so let us... Uh, repeat the process now that we've known what are the terms, okay, what is the definition or what are the um, stand of those terms, okay. So, let's begin at the message source. So, message source here is the plain text, okay, that is to be sent to the receiver, to our destination. Okay, so this message source is represented by letter X. Okay, so we have here an encryption algorithm. Encryption algorithm happens, okay, where this plain text letter X is no longer read as plain text but as a cipher text Y. Okay, the letter Y here is the ciphertext of the plain text X. Okay, how did A became a ciphertext? Of course, by the encryption algorithm using the key source K. Okay, so K here represents the key source for encrypting the 
plain text. Okay, so that uh, message goes through a secure channel. Okay, wherein in this secure channel, if there is a vulnerability seen by hackers, then they could have a chance to do crypt analysis. Okay, so those hackers, those crypt analysts, okay, analyzes how they could decrypt or how they could read, okay, the cipher text and translate it to its original form X. Okay, of course, um, a vulnerability there could be an easy key. Okay, so if the key source used is an easy one, okay, then hackers or crypt analysts may identify it easily and may decrypt the message easily. Okay, but if there is no um, vulnerability, then the message could pass through without the hackers or crypt analysts, okay, knowing what is the plain text okay so as it goes through the secure channel the receiver then would receive the message but not in the form of a cipher text but in the form of a plain text so how would it became a plain text okay so before it comes to the receiver at this a decryption algorithm okay is done okay how is it done again using the same key because this is conventional encryption model it represents symmetric encryption okay so it is also used by the same key letter k to decrypt the cipher text okay so when decryption is done the cipher text is now converted to its original form x okay and this original form okay or the plain text will now be the one to receive okay but by our receiver so plain text it will now be read as the plain text okay so that is the illustration of conventional encryption model using this figure okay okay next is cryptography so from our previous discussions i know i've already discussed this one or i've already um, linked it to our discussion about encryption and the models but this time let us have an analysis what really is cryptography? Okay, so cryptographic systems are generally classified along three independent dimensions. One is the type of operation used for transforming plain text to cipher text. Okay, so by substitution and transposition. So what we've discussed earlier is the model. Okay, of how cryptographic um, communication happens. Okay, but it says here there are ways, okay, how to operate or how to process um, the transformation of plain text to cipher text. So those are the keys. Okay, so by substitution and transposition. Second, the number of keys used is either one key both to encrypt and decrypt or two keys one for encryption second for decryption okay so it is stronger okay if we use two keys it is uh, harder for the crypt analyst to classify how they will decrypt or know what is the plain text Okay, and third is the way in which the plain text is processed. Okay, so it's either in black cipher or stream cipher. So we'll know more about this, okay, as we go further. 
Okay, uh, let's take what is script analysis. Okay, so upon the illustration on the figure we had previously, script analysis there um, was discussed. Okay, so it is actually the process of attempting to discover X or K or both, okay, is known as script analysis. So, um, sample script analysts there are the hackers, okay, wanting to know what is the X. Of course, they would know what is X or the plain text if they would know what is the key used, okay. And it is also the strategy used, okay, by the crypt analyst depends on the nature of the encryption scheme and information available to the analyst. Okay. So next is the type of attack on encrypted message. So how would the crypt analyst, crypt analysts, okay, would know, okay, or how would they uh, do some attacks on encrypted messages. So, first by ciphertext only attack. Okay, so maybe uh, knowing what is the ciphertext for them is enough. Okay, to know what is the message. Okay, second is known plain text attack. So, how insecure was our channel? How how was its vulnerability? How big was its vulnerability that um, our crypt analyst could go through the plain text already without knowing first what is the encrypted message? Okay. And next is chosen plain text attack. So in the first one, ciphertext attack only, if they had already uh, computed, okay, one important plain text there then it would be enough for them what is the important information about the message being um, transmitted or being sent to the receiver okay and chosen cipher text attack so it's the same process in chosen plain text attack we're in um, having uh, chosen ciphertext would be enough for them to know what is the message sent. Okay. Next is steganography. It is actually a plain text message, okay, which is hidden in something. Okay. Okay, one here is the character marking. So selected letters of printed or type written are overwritten in pencil so the marks are ordinarily not visible unless the paper held at an angle to bright light so it is a technique wherein uh, the hidden um, or a message is hidden wherein we could only identify that if we held our paper to a right angle okay wherein we could read that um, hidden message okay and another technique is invisible ink okay and pin punctures okay so small pin punctures on selected letter are ordinarily not visible unless the paper again is held up in front of a light okay so it is also another technique okay and next is type writer correction ribbon it is used between lines typed with a black ribbon wherein the result of typing with the correction tape are visible only and now let's have the classical encryption techniques specifically the substitution techniques a substitution technique is one in which the letters of plain text are replaced by other letters or by numbers of symbols okay so we actually have three types of substitution techniques and I will be demonstrating to you okay how to use these techniques okay in our next lecture video okay so for now let me discuss to you what are those types of substitution techniques so one is Caesar cipher which is the earliest known use of substitution cipher and also the simplest and known as shift 
cipher that shifts the letters of alphabet against another alphabet to create a secret message. It was named after Julius Caesar, a Roman emperor, wherein the substitution technique was used in order to communicate secretly with his army. The Caesar cipher involves replacing each letter of alphabet with the letter standing three places further down the alphabet. So you'll understand this more once you watch okay our or my demonstration video about this techniques. Okay. Second technique is the mono alphabetic cipher wherein it has random value of key space alphabet. Okay, unlike Caesar cipher which was fixed into three space. So in Caesar cipher it is fixed in three space. Okay, while mono alphabetic cipher has random value of key space. Okay. And next is the Playfair cipher which is the best known multiple letter encryption cipher and that treats diagram in the plain text as single units and translates these units into cipher diagram the playfair algorithm is is based on the use of five by five matrix of letters constructed using a keyword Okay, now let's have the modern encryption techniques. First is the black cipher. In fact, all symmetric black encryption in current use are based on a structure referred to as Festel black cipher. For this reason, it is important to know the design principles of Festel cipher. But we'll be concentrating on our chapter objectives, okay, which is for you to know how to use okay, the conventional uh, type of encryption. Okay. And next, we have stream ciphers and black ciphers. So a stream cipher is one that encrypts a digital data stream, okay, one bit or one byte at a time. Okay. A black cipher is one in which a block of plain text is treated as a whole and used to produce a cipher block of equal length. Okay, so that's it for this video. Um, kindly uh, check our next update for my demonstration video about our uh, substitution techniques. Okay, so thank you for listening and God bless everyone.